All right, so this is going on page 110 when we are done. Now we have talked about reflections, rotations, translations, and now we're talking about symmetry, which might seem a little out of line with the rest, but it's not. Um, symmetry is not brand new to you, except that in the fact that there are more kinds of symmetry than what you have been exposed to. So when I talk about symmetry or something having symmetry, there's really only one thing that you know comes to mind for you most of the time, I would imagine. You with us, Braden? Yeah. Um, all right. So a figure has symmetry if there is a transformation, okay, because we're talking about transformations, of the figure such that the image coincides with the pre-image. So coincides means what? Uh, it's like uh, oh, if something coincides. Like I have an, a doctor's appointment tomorrow and it coincides with the meeting that I have. It's like at the same time, or like happens together, right? So if you have a line, remember we did coinciding lines? I give you two different equations and you graph both lines, but it's really the same line because they coincide, okay? Um, so, shh, look at this heart over here. Does this heart have symmetry? Yes. yes. So one of the ways you may have thought about symmetry or been exposed to symmetry is that if I took it and I folded it on that line, then it folds on itself, right? That's one way to look at that. But that's not what symmetry really, really is. Symmetry is about transformations. And if I took that heart and I reflected it in that line, wouldn't it look like nothing happened? Right? So that's, it coincides with itself because it's going to look like nothing happened. So if I take that heart and I reflect it in that line, I still get that heart just like it looks. You with me on that? And that's the kind of symmetry, the, the line or reflectional symmetry that you have been exposed to before. So a figure has line symmetry or reflection symmetry. Okay, that's where the transformation word comes in. If it can be reflected across a line such that the image coincides with the pre-image. Okay. You reflect it, looks like nothing happened. So then the line of symmetry also called the axis of symmetry divides the figure into two congruent halves. So that should all be one big fat review because this is, you know, something that you've at least been looking at for a long, long time. So we're going to do these together real quick. It just says, tell whether each figure has line symmetry. If so, draw all the lines of symmetry. Plus, we're going to um, write down how many there are. So look at this first one. Does it have line symmetry? Yes. yes. So the answer is yes. How many lines of symmetry does it have? One. I'm going to draw in the line of symmetry. And it doesn't have to be dotted, but I'm not... It's the only way I can make it even look remotely straight. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it can be a diagonal line. It can be in any direction. Yeah, it's a good question. All right, so what about this next one? Does it have line symmetry? No, yes, no. no. Yes, no. Diagonal. Diagonally? No. So if I draw that in, is that a line of symmetry? No. If I reflect it in that line, is it going to look exactly the same? No. No, because this point right here would reflect down here, and this one reflects over there, right? So it does not have line symmetry. Does that line cut it into two congruent triangles? Well, yes, but it's still, but that doesn't mean that it's a reflection, okay? So this is actually no, there is no symmetry there. What about C? Does it have line symmetry? Yes. yes. And how many lines of symmetry? Oh, I meant to write a one over here. Let's see. There's one here. One here. Okay. So how many is that? Five. Five. Five lines of symmetry. We've got one here. And one here. Okay. Any more than that? Uh, no. no, this is it. All right, so what about this one? Any lines of symmetry? Yes. yes. How many? One. one. Do all capital printed Bs have line symmetry? No. 
No, if you look like on a, you know, a handwriting worksheet, the capital Bs usually look maybe more like that, but some fonts are like that, so it really just depends on the font. Um, what about this one? Yes. Vertical, horizontal, diagonal, and so that is four. And of course, we're assuming just a tiny bit that things are actually congruent and whatever, and that's fine. Yeah. Are we all good? Yes. Sir. yes? So that's all symmetry that should be a big review. So now we're going to look at some symmetry that is new to you. And a figure has what's called rotational symmetry. Or radial symmetry, usually called rotational symmetry. If it can be rotated about a point by an angle greater than 0 and less than 360 so that the image coincides with the pre-image. Right? So I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to give you a, a, a minute and a little bit to play as well. But if you look at what I have here, all of these things that I have all have rotational symmetry. So I can take this and I can turn it less than 360 degrees and it coincides with itself. You can't even tell that I did anything. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So then the angle of rotation, which is something that we are concerned with here, the angle of rotation is the smallest angle through which a figure can be rotated to coincide with itself. So if I look at this same hexagon right here, I can turn the hexagon just a little bit and it lands back there. I can do it all the way upside down and it's the same, but it's the smallest angle. So if I think about this point right here and I make all these turns, there's this point can be set down in one, two, three, four, five, six different places. So to rotate it just that one little turn, how many degrees is that? 60. Okay. So I could rotate it 120 and 180 and it's still like the same, but 60 would be my angle of rotation because that's the smallest. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll talk about the circle in just a little bit. All right, so then the number of times the figure coincides with itself as it rotates through 360 is called the order of symmetry. So the order for my hexagon is what? Six, because there's six different places I could set it down as I go around when I go through my angle of symmetry, uh, but go through my rotations, right? So let's talk about the circle then. Does the circle have rotational symmetry? Yes. What would the order of symmetry be? Infinity. There are an infinite number of places I can set it back down as I go through 360 degrees. Does that make sense? The hexagon, there's only six. There is an infinite number of places I can set the circle back down. Okay, so let's talk about how we got that 60 here for the angle of rotation for the hexagon. We took 360 and divided it by what? Six. six. So to get the angle, that is always 360 divided by whatever the order is. Well, the order of the circle is infinity. So 360 divided by infinity, is that something that you personally can actually calculate? No. no. Okay, so when you get into pre-cal and you start talking about limits, the limit of that, you know, as the, the denominator, you know, as it approaches infinity, if the denominator is infinity, when you end up with something like that, then it's, that means it's a super duper small fraction, right? And infinity keeps on going, so it keeps on getting smaller and smaller and smaller. What is that number approaching? Zero. zero, okay? It's approaching zero because it's one over infinity. I mean, it's 360, but in, in the grand scheme of things, with infinity as the denominator, does the fact that that's 360 and not one really matter? Like, no, because infinity is so large. So that fraction is approaching zero as infinity gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, is the angle actually zero? No, but it's the smallest thing you could possibly get before you get to zero, which isn't something we can actually calculate right now or even sometimes comprehend, but that is what's happening. So the circle is kind of a special case. It's, you can't really give the straight up answers like the rest of them, but you can still get, make that work. So here's what I want you to do now. You've got some things on your table, and these are... Um, all different, like that. I got them at the Goodwill, so some of them, they're, they're missing pieces and whatever, but I want you to go ahead and you can dump them out. I'm going to give you a minute to play, but here, wait, hang on before you do it, because I want you listening. Here's what I want you to find in the set that you have, and you may not all have something to give me for this, because, again, you have different things, but I want you to find me something that doesn't have rotational symmetry, 
something that, and then the one that has the largest and the one that has the smallest. But hang on, just hang on, don't dump anything out yet. Because I want you to think about this. The whole purpose of you having this is that when you're a toddler, like these give, were given to toddlers, thank you. And a lot of times they're given to, you know, when they're a little too young. So this is their approach, right? Okay, but even as they know maybe that this is supposed to go in here, hand-eye coordination is still not the best, right? So you're still kind of going like this, but as you see, they have options on how that would actually fit into the space in the toy. Does that make sense to you? And that's your rotational symmetry. So I want you to find the, the figure that you have that has the largest angle, the smallest angle, and one that does not have rotational symmetry. So who wants to give me or tell me what their largest, uh, which ones they have that do not have rotational symmetry? Oh. What do you think does not? Okay, the crescent moon one, what do you have? Okay, like this, another moon, yeah. Two different moons, good. Okay, trapezoid, good. Anything else? And some of y'all may not have had any that didn't have rotational symmetry. Did you have one that doesn't? The heart? Okay, very good. All right, so we got some that don't have rotational symmetry. Um, what about the largest angle of rotation? Brayden, what you got? Okay, the triangle, what's the angle of rotation there? 120. Okay, so can anybody beat 120? That's meeting 120. <laughs> but anybody have an angle of rotation greater than 120? Because there's a lot of them out there. None of y'all found them? Wait, 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 wait. Where's the circle? No. Can rotate through an angle less than 360, but greater than 120, because there's some out there that are greater than 120. That'd be 90. Yeah, we don't have any. Well, you, you per, your table may not this out there, I promise. What do you have in your hand right there, Haley? What's the angle of rotation there? That's less. I want greater than 120. The oval, and then there's other ones out there besides the oval. But what's the angle of rotation for this? No. 180. 180. 180. Bam. Is 180 greater than 120? Yes, it is. So this is the one that you have. This is actually the largest angle you can get because anything else over 180, you're not going to be able to get back around to 360. Okay, but 180 works, all right? What about smallest angle of rotation? What do you, okay, the, but I said besides the circle. Okay, so your star, what's your angle of rotation there? But it has five, I, mean, I know it has multiple sides, but there's only, the order was five. No, the order, how many times, listen, everybody listen. Shh. How many times can you, does it coincide with itself? So like how many different ways could you turn it and put it in there to get all the way around to 360? Five. So 360 divided by five is? 72. Okay. So I know there's a lot of those star shapes out there. Can anybody beat 72? 45. 90, or what is that? Oh, I thought you had, thought you had the square. How many sides, well, what's the angle of rotation? I'm going to take yours for a second. I want that. And I'll take this. Does this fit in here? Yeah. It's 45. Okay. So, as far I could have, listen. There could be an angle of rotation less than 45. It does exist. It just doesn't exist in the toys that you have in front of you. So, I have here one that has a 45 degree angle of rotation. I have one that has a... Z, it has no angle of rotation. And then, um, do you, sure, you still have your oval out? I think it's, I'm going to borrow it and I'll give it back to you. Um, so, again, as a toddler, as I'm trying to make this work and maybe going about it this way, or even if I know that it's supposed to go there, I'm still having trouble maybe making it work just because that's, you know, hand eye coordination we're practicing on. Do you think that I would have an easier time with a larger angle of rotation or a smaller angle of rotation? Larger, why? 
Okay. So like my larger, how many different ways can I make this fit in here? Two. With this one, there's only two, right? So if I'm doing this, I have less options than if I have this, and I'm doing the same thing, right? So it's actually the more complicated looking figure, the smaller angle of rotation. There are eight different times if I did that, that it would actually work. Where, and on this one, I better be really good if I don't have angle of rotation at all, because I got to hit that dead on or it's not going in. Does that make sense to you? So just wanted you to think, when you're thinking angle of rotation, or um, rotation symmetry, sorry, think about these shapes and can you turn it and fit it into the toy, all right? Because this does apply to your functions moving forward, just like reflections and translations do. Symmetry in your functions is something you have to recognize. And the connections are not always made for you that it's the same thing you've been doing. And all it is is the same thing you've been doing, OK? So on this one in particular, hands off the toys now. In this particular one, if I'm trying to figure out my order, right? I can pick a vertex, and I know that I can turn this. Obviously, I can go 360 degrees, but the first place I could turn that down or set it back down would be right here. That's one, two, three, four, all the way back around. So my order is four because there's four different turns that I can make or four different ways I can make it fit in that toy. So then what's my angle of rotation? 90 degrees because it's just that 360 divided by four. Okay, easy enough? All right, now there is a subcategory of rotational symmetry, and this is the one that actually is what applies to your functions more so going forward, and it is what is called point symmetry. And we're going to look at some of the functions tomorrow. Point symmetry. All point symmetry is is rotational symmetry. through 180 degrees. Now, I, that does not mean that the angle of rotation is 180. That means that you can rotate it 180 degrees and it coincides with itself, all right? But again, that's not necessarily my angle of rotation. It could be, but that's not what that means. And this point symmetry we'll look at tomorrow when we look at functions. And just like you could have the, you know, the parent function of a quadratic, the parabola with the vertex at 0, 0, it has line or reflectional symmetry, right? And your reflectional symmetry is your y-axis. Well, what we're going to look at is point symmetry for these functions where the center of rotation is the origin. And if it has that, then it is a certain kind of function that we'll, we'll look at. All right, but let's just go back and look at shapes for a little bit. It says, tell whether each figure has rotational symmetry. If so, give the angle of rotational symmetry and the order of symmetry. All right, so for A. Um, does it have rotational symmetry? Yes. Is there more than one way I could fit that into the toy? Yes. Okay, so yes. And so then I need the order and the angle. What's the order of symmetry? Two. And then the angle is 180. Does this have point symmetry? Yes. If you can rotate that 180 degrees, and it coincides with itself, it has point symmetry. And if the angle of rotation is 180, then obviously you can turn it 180, right? Does this have line symmetry? No. no, it does not. All right, so this second one, does this have rotational symmetry? No, there is no rotational symmetry, and that's what the question is actually asking. So does it have point symmetry? No, if you don't have rotational symmetry, you can't have point symmetry, because point symmetry is a special kind of rotational. Um, does it have line symmetry? Yes. So here's one with rotational, no line. Here's one with line, no rotational. Does C have rotational? Yes. yes. What is the order? Okay, the order is 6. What is the angle? 60. Does it have point symmetry? Yes, it has point symmetry. Does it have line symmetry? Yes. So that one has rotational point and line symmetry. It has them all. Look at D. Does it have rotational symmetry? Yes. So what's the order? What's the angle? 120. Does it have point symmetry? If I rotate this 180 degrees, does it coincide with itself? 
No. If I turn it upside down, it looks upside down. If I turn this upside down, it looks the same. Does that make sense to you? I, so I can't rotate it through 180 degrees and it coincide with, my, coincide with itself. Does it have line symmetry? Yes. yes. So line symmetry, rotational, no point. Does E have rotational symmetry? No. no. Yes, yes, it does. Yes. What is the order? The order is 2. The angle is 180. Does it have point symmetry? Yes, it does. Does it have line symmetry? No. That's the same one on the front where you wanted it to have line symmetry. Like it wasn't a quick no. For, the, for some of you, it said no quickly. Some of you said yes, but then you're like no, but then you had to think about it for a minute, right? Because you kind of want it to because it's not as lopsided and weird looking as something that has no symmetry at all. So it does have symmetry. It just doesn't have line symmetry. Okay, so it's still more aesthetically pleasing than something that doesn't have symmetry at all. Um, F, does it have rotational symmetry? No. Does it have line symmetry? No. So this one doesn't have any symmetry at all. None at all. Okay. We all good so far? Now, even though what the shapes you have in front of you are technically three-dimensional, they're like little prisms that are some prism-like things that you're putting in there, um, all, everything we've talked about so far with line and rotational symmetry is all two-dimensional stuff. Okay, we're, still just, we're just talking two dimensions um, about triangles and all this stuff that we have here. It's all two dimensional. We're going to look at symmetry in three dimensions, so it's going to change a little bit. But I want to make sure you understand, even though I gave you three dimensional toys, we're still just looking at the shapes two dimensionally right now. We good? Okay. So let's look at three dimensions then. A three dimensional figure has axis. No, 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 no. I jumped in here. Sorry. Has plane symmetry. If a plane can divide the figure into two congruent reflected halves. Plane symmetry is kind of like the three-dimensional version of line symmetry. So as you see over there, you have that prism, and that plane comes through and slices it into two congruent prisms, right? And if you, so these things that you have, most of them are prism-like, and I say that because like this one is technically what's called an anti-prism, um, but it's still a, you know, prism-like. But um, it would be one that would be like a prism. So you had line symmetry for the base, but the prism itself actually has plane symmetry when you start talking three dimensions. Does that make sense to you? So you can, you can go through the bases with your planes, but you could also go horizontally. All right, then a three-dimensional figure has what is called axis symmetry. If there is a line about which the figure can be rotated by an angle greater than zero, less than 360, so that the image coincides with the pre-image. Axis symmetry is like the 3D version of rotational symmetry. So all of these figures that you have with your toy that had rotational symmetry, they actually have axis symmetry as well because you're actually turning the whole shape. Does that make sense to you? And the axis doesn't always have to go through and be the height. The axis could go through at different angles or horizontally or whatever. But um, the axis symmetry is taking the three-dimensional figure and rotating it instead of just the two-dimensional figure. Okay, we're good with that? All right, so let's see if we can identify some stuff here. So let's tell whether each figure has plane symmetry, symmetry about an axis or an so this trapezoidal prism, does it have plane symmetry? <laughs> All right. Does the base, the trapezoid that is the base, does it have line symmetry? Base? The base. Just the base two-dimensionally. Does it have line symmetry? No. No, it doesn't. Okay. But the, the prism does have plane symmetry. Now, the plane isn't going to go horizontally like through the bases because the base doesn't even have line symmetry. But I could come down this way, right? And I, don't, I can't draw in the plane exactly like they have it up there. I'm not that talented. But I can draw in where the slice would be anyway. It's kind of like doing a cross section, but it's not, it's not what a cross section is. So the plane could go, if the plane went through right there, then I would have one plane of symmetry when it came down through vertically. So the answer is yes. And this does it have axis symmetry? So think about like if you know if you think about this as like a piece of cheese or play-doh that's in front of you that you could cut with a knife for your plane symmetry. You think about sticking a straw in it somehow so that you could rotate it. Well, if I did that from the top, 
I'd have to rotate it 360 degrees for it to look the same, right? And if I did one like through the side like this, same thing. So this does not have axis symmetry at all. Okay. Then equilateral triangular prism, does it have plane symmetry? Yes. yes. So how many planes of symmetry do it have? Okay, so look at the base, just the base. How many lines of symmetry does the base have? One, one, two, three. 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 It is an equilateral triangle, so there are three lines of symmetry, right? So when this becomes a prism, then those lines, I can turn them into planes, and I can have three planes right there. Does that make sense? But then I can also go this way. So there's four. There's a total of four. Then axis, right? Does it have axis symmetry? Yes. yes. How many axes could I actually draw, or I, could I actually have? One. So I can have one. Do we all agree it could go through the base like this? No. Okay, so I can have one that goes through there, right? Yeah. Could I have one that goes through here? Yeah. Yes, and one there and there. So it's actually three different places, because I could put one right there and rotate it three or 180, rather. Um, it's four, but we're not going to worry about numbers on that. That can be a little bit weird, depending on the figures. All right, what about a square pyramid? Does it have plane symmetry? Yes. 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 Now, I, do, I couldn't go through horizontally, obviously, right? But could I go vertically? Yes, as long as I go through the vertex, vertically, how many planes of symmetry would I have? Because you can turn. Because the square has four lines of symmetry. Oh, I get it. So as long as yeah, you have to go through the vertex to make it happen, but there's four. All right, axis symmetry. Does it have axis symmetry? Yes, because again, you could go straight through the vertex, and that could be your axis, and then you can rotate it, and that works that way. Okay. Any questions at this point? All right, so I'm going to give you a minute to fill in the bottom down here while I go, I'm going to go check, roll, and pass out the homework. But I want you to, um, it says name a letter of the alphabet with each type of symmetry. Now, I just want you to think about capital printed letters. Don't go lowercase or anything, just capital printed letters, like old school, second grade handwriting book letters. Um, and fill in at least one for each blank, more than one if you can. So I want you to think, of, think through those, make sure you're reading carefully what it says. And then I'll give you a minute to work on that and we'll come back and talk about it. All righty, so let's start here. Horizontal line of symmetry. Let's give me. Okay, I heard B, D, C, E, about H, X, O. The letter Y. Oh, no. All right, now I didn't write my B the best for that to work, but I know what you mean by that. All right, and there's, probably, there's more, but that's fine. That's good enough. What about vertical line? Well, first of all, which of the ones that I just wrote can I also put for vertical? Okay. H. O. O. X. X. Okay. Now, and then. The letter y. W. Okay. W. T. A. M. V. Now, why? If I write it like this, right? I have to be careful how I write it, but that works. Okay. All right. Two lines of symmetry. H, X, O, what else? There's one more you can give me. I. All right, now this next one says rotational symmetry, but not line symmetry. There's three. S, Z. Rotational, but not line. There's one more. Not Q. That's what I did on the last one, and I got the I and I C. Oh, just kidding. Now, just look at what's here to help you. Is it on? Like, maybe look at your paper sideways. Not a Not a curvy letter. What? N. It's just Z oh, sideways, isn't it? Sideways. So I was like, just look at what's there. There we go. That's funny. I literally said it. All right. No symmetry at all. P. P. Q. R. Q. 
Q R J G, not Z, because I have it up there. Um, so let's talk about Q for a minute, because sometimes people will argue with me about Q. Because it's possible if you wrote it like a perfect circle, and then the little, whatever this thing is called, goes through perpendicular like that, that maybe it had that. But really, I mean, and there's probably a font out there where it's like that. Most people aren't going to write like that. So I can see how you could argue about that. You could argue about why also, because even though that does work, most people don't write it like that, right? I mean, fonts would be like that. But if I wrote it like this, then it's no symmetry. So it's kind of arguable. But my question but. is, though, if you rotate it, even if you rotate it like you said on Q, wouldn't the little thingy be on the other side? Right, but this is line symmetry, not rotational. Oh, it would not have rotational, but it could have line. All right, are we all good? Uh, there's more that we can put in each one of these, but as long as you understand. All right, awesome.